Yep. Well, good morning. This is uh, today is uh, July the 16th, 2023, which is hard to believe. This year is flying by, it seems like. And uh, but uh, welcome everybody that's here. We have a good uh, group here this morning, and uh, welcome to those of you uh, who are watching this on the internet. And we just uh, want to pray, start with prayer. So if everybody will bow their heads. Lord, we come before you this morning and we thank you. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that uh, we know that you're here, your presence is here. And we pray, Father, that you would anoint everything that's said, your word especially, uh, that you would minister to the hearers, Lord, and that you would help us to draw closer to you. And we just thank you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I want to speak this morning um, uh, on justification, sanctification, and glorification. Now, I've talked about this before. I know there's a few of you here, like Candy and Robbie may have heard me talk about this before, and I just think it's, it's so very, very important that we understand what God has done for us and what He's doing in us right now because it can be so very frustrating, as we all know, and difficult to live a Christian life. And then what God is going to do, the great hope that we have, the expectation that we have, and what He's going to do, and which makes all of this that we're going through worthwhile, worth going through. It. And so the first thing I want to talk about is justification. What's justification mean? It means to be made righteous, in the sight of God, to vindicate. Now that word vindication almost gives us or implies to us that He's going to vindicate us, that those of us who, who have been accused and by the enemy, Satan, and who have been cast down all of our lives, um, God in the end is going to vindicate us. He's going to do things in our lives to vindicate us, to show the enemy, the devil, and all the world what he's accomplished in our lives. And in Romans 9, uh, well, let me start out by saying that um, justification is to be transformed from the penalty of sin. We have, through justification in Christ, been not only forgiven, but we have been totally justified before God. God. All of our sin has been done away with. It's been discounted uh, through the precious blood of Jesus Christ and His crucifixion on, crucifixion on the cross. God has completely justified us. In fact, Jesus even said from the cross, the last words He said, uh, He said, um, it is finished. And indeed, it is. He did all that was needed in every detail to justify us before God, that we might be completely forgiven and no more sinners, no more cut off from God, no more dead in our sin. He fulfilled the law as only He could. He was a, the perfect man. But he was not just man, as we know. He was God in the flesh. He was the Word made flesh. Uh, Jesus said, uh, in, well, in Romans, let's read Romans 9. Kathy, if you'll read that. Romans 9, 9 and 10. 9, 9? Yeah, and 10. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. No, that's where you're at. He said 9, 9. Uh, he, he wants you to read uh, 10. Not, well, 10. I want you to read 9 and 10. That's nine. Romans 9, 9 and 10? Oh, 9, 1? No, no, Romans 9, 9 and 10. Let me make sure. I'll, 9, 9. I'll, is, oh, go to, it, I'm sorry. It's Romans 10, chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. <clears throat> that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
Now, this is all that God requires, is that we believe in Jesus Christ, is that we confess Him with our mouth, and that we believe in our heart, that He died for us and was raised from the dead. Now, since the time of the creation of man, men have been trying to justify themselves before God in every way possible. They have, they have tried religion. Uh, there are hundreds of religions in the world. And uh, man has, has done everything he can to justify himself and to, to get to God uh, apart from the God, what, the way that God appointed us to be saved, because it requires obedience to God. It requires a, 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 a surrendering of our will. It requires uh, believing and receiving Christ into our life. Um, Jesus said, "Now, so the beginning point. Let me say the beginning point for us as Christians, uh, for for all the world." is to believe in Jesus Christ and that God hath raised him from the dead and to confess with our mouth that he is Lord. And so that's the beginning. And but it's not that's that's the starting point, but that's that's not where it ends. Jesus said uh, in um, the uh, third chapter of John, unless a man or a woman be born again they shall never inherit the kingdom of God. So, so first we believe in our heart and we confess it with our mouth. And then there is an operation done by the Holy Spirit. He comes into us and He causes us to be born again, regenerated. In fact, the Bible says that He puts to death the old man, the old sinful nature, the old Adamic nature, and He creates a new in us a new nature, his own very divine nature, he puts in us. We become that day uh, a truly a spiritual child of God. It's a born again experience, but it only happens deep inside of us in our spirit. Our flesh doesn't change. It's still wicked and it's still full of sin, and our mind doesn't change. It has to be renewed by reading God's Word every day. And that's called renewing the mind by the water of the Word. Putting on the mind of Christ. Um, so, our, our real starting point is the born again experience. And that is from God. And only God can do that in us. Now, for me, that, that was started on uh, May the 17th, uh, 1976. That's when I was born again. And, and God definitely came into my life. He changed me. I was changed. I was born again. There was something completely different about me. But then the very next night, because I was a drunkard and a womanizer and all these things, the very next night I went out and got drunk because my flesh had not been renewed, nor had my mind, but my spirit had been. And, and I didn't understand these things. I did not understand, but immediately, a voice said to me, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and uh, so I said, I, I thought, man, what am I doing? I got saved last night. Something happened to me. And so from that point on, I changed. And, and I've never been the same since. So our, our, our journey with God begins with being born again, spiritually. And um, there are many people in the world, sad to say, right now, who are very religious. And they even believe, but they're not born again. And we know that by the fruit of their life, the, the way they're living their lives. Um, they don't live to glorify God. They're not living in, in obedience to, to God. They're still in an unregenerated, unborn again state. But though they believe in their mind, in God, and may even believe in Jesus, they are unwilling to come to Him 
and humble themselves and pray and confess Him as the Lord of their life. They are unwilling to be obedient to God and to strive after Him, to seek after Him, um, to, to obey Him. Jesus said that if you love me, you will obey me. You will obey me if you really love me. And that is the sign, the mark of a true born again Christian. You will see them walking in obedience, striving to please God with their life, seeking to know God's will for their life and fulfill it. Because God has a purpose for each and every one of us. We're not just here uh, wandering through this world with no purpose, no goals, no nothing. Those in the world who do not know God, who are lost, they're wandering through this life with any, without you see them. We see them all around us. They have no purpose. They have no plans. They're just lost. Lost in this world. But for those of us who are born again Christians, God has a great, great purpose for our lives. And don't you ever think that He doesn't. And don't you ever stop seeking God for your purpose because that's the most important thing in this world that we can come to realize is what God, what have you called me to do? Now, we can know general things that He's called us to do. There's two things specifically, and that is to go into all the world and preach the gospel, uh, beginning in Jerusalem, the the scripture says, in Judea and all Samaria. But for us, that relates to right here in our neighborhood, in your neighborhood. Go and tell people about Jesus. Ever people that you meet at the grocery store, uh, at school, your uh, um, what, 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 whatever in life you're doing, whatever your sphere of influence is, then influence, influence for Jesus, influence for good. Tell people, warn them, in fact, that Jesus is coming, and He's coming very soon, and He is. He's coming in the rapture very soon. And he's going to take those born-again believers, us, out of here with him to heaven. So um, the second purpose that we have is to make disciples of men and women. And that's why we're here. That's my whole purpose for living now is to, to bring other people to Christ to pray with them, to receive Jesus into their heart, to see that they become born again. And then, to do everything in my power to help them, to disciple them, to teach them the Word of God, uh, to help them become stronger and stronger as Christian, as a Christian. So that someday, when we leave this world, and we stand before Jesus at the Bema Seat of Christ, and we indeed will, I can look around and I will see you. That is my hope. That is, you know, I, I'm, I, we, Jesus said that for those, for the things that we do in this body after we're born again, He's going to reward us for obeying Him. But we don't do it for rewards. I'm not doing it necessarily for rewards. I'm doing this because I love you, each and every one of you. I really do. I love you because the love of God is in me. He put it in me. That's the only way I can love you is because He first loved me. But I do love you and I want to see you succeed. I want to see you someday stand before the Bema Seat of Christ and be rewarded for what you're doing for Him. For your obedience to Him. And so those are our two general most important uh, purpose is to preach the Gospel wherever we can and we say you might say well I'm not an evangelist or I'm not a missionary well yes you are you are an ambassador for Christ we are a royal priesthood a peculiar people the Bible says and we are only passing through now this world because we're on our way to our heavenly kingdom and so in passing through we are to bring as many with us as we possibly can. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that, that's our purpose. 
That's what we live for. Now, at the same time, yes, we have to work jobs. We have to go to school. We have to be whatever, wherever we're at in life. But the great thrill, we, there, there is a, we are all on a journey. But Jesus said that good work which He has started in us, He will be faithful to finish that good work in us unto that day, the day that we stand before Him. And so that that is our that, that is we should be we should have a zeal, and as we obey Him, as we walk with the Holy Spirit, and as we deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Him and obey the Holy Spirit and put this flesh down because it truly has, the Bible says, it's been crucified with Christ. It's buried. The old man is dead. But yet, it tries to hang, it hangs on and we carry it around. It's like we're carrying a dead man around. And truly, we are. The, the, but it's been crucified in Christ. So, the second thing that God is doing, and what is He doing in our lives right now? That's what He has done for those of us who are born again Christians. But what is He doing right now? Well, the term is called sanctification. And what does that mean? It means um, make to make holy, to set apart, it is an act of the Holy Spirit by which believers become more and more conformed to Christ every day. See, that, that is what the Holy Spirit, that's why He was given. Um, in 1526, John 1526, Albert, if you'll read it. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Amen. So Jesus made a promise to his disciples. He said, I'm not going to leave you alone. He said they were they were very sad. And because they they did not want him to go, and he said, It's needful for me to go. I must go. So that I might send a comforter, the comforter to you, the person of the Holy Spirit. I must send him to you, and he will lead and guide you in all truth. And he will comfort you. And, and, and so we have the Holy Spirit in our lives. He is as real uh, as God because he is God. He is the third person, if you will, of, of the Godhead. He is as much God as Jesus, the, the Word made flesh, and as God the Father. He knows the mind of God because He is the mind of God. And He knows exactly our destiny. He knows our purpose. He knows exactly what God created us for before we were in the mind of God, before the world, before the universe was even created. He knew Robbie. He knew Rob. He knew Sabrina. You were in Him, Jeff, in His mind, before He even created the universe. He, that is how almighty God is. And so, the Holy Spirit is the one that will lead us and guide us on our journey into that purpose which God's called us to do if we will pray and seek Him. But you've got to put, we have to put down the flesh. We have to get out of the carnal mind. We have to stay in the Word of God and put on the mind of Christ every day. We have to seek Him. The Bible says in uh, one of the Psalms, it says that um, His Word is, is uh, a lamp uh, unto my path and a, and a light unto my feet. His Word uh, is living and it is powerful. Uh, every time that we read the Word of God, we are, we are bringing into us the very life of God. Have you ever noticed that uh, days that you read the Bible it's a much better day. You feel stronger spiritually. And then the days that you don't read it, you're much more easily tempted. You start thinking about maybe the past things. Uh, those urges maybe start coming in again. The Word of God is quick and powerful. 
It's sharper than any two any two uh, double-edged sword, and it's a discerner of the hearts of the. Uh, uh, it's a discerner of the hearts, uh, of the intentions of man. And so uh, I can't remember the exact quote, but um, it is quick and powerful. Uh, the word of God is, is there's two things. Well, I don't want to say thing. The Holy Spirit. Uh, well, the Scripture is this: They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So the Spirit of God and the truth, which is the Word of God, those are the two. Um, I don't want to say the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God, but He's given us the greatest weapon that we have, which is the Word of God. Um, so, if we are going to come to know Him, we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. <clears throat> so, sanctification is the is that which the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives right now if we will allow him to. Now we can resist the Holy Spirit. We can go our own way. We can still live in the flesh as even as a Christian, a born again Christian. In the spirit, we have the divine nature of God, but we can decide, choose to walk in this flesh and obey it rather than obey the spirit. We can we can do the deeds of the flesh. And the Bible warns that that if we do those, they lead, it leads to death. But if we will follow the Spirit inside of us and put on the mind of Christ and renew our mind, that leads to life. It leads to, to eternal life. So the Holy Spirit right now is is, and, and I'll say that. The process of sanctification is to transform us from the power of sin. Now, does that mean we, we can reach a point we'll never sin? No. There will always be something, even sins of omission, things that we will do that's <coughs> sinful in the sight of God that we don't even realize. It. But it does mean that as we cooperate with the Holy Spirit and walk in obedience, that we can get more and more and more victory over sin in our lives. We can uh, walk uh, um, in, in, as a, a successful Christian. We do not have to be beaten down and a defeated Christian, as so many are. And that's why the power of God, we're not seeing the power of God in this world as we should. That's not why we're not seeing the manifestations of healings and uh, the raising of the dead and, 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 and so many things that, that God wants to do, He cannot do because His children are not walking in obedience, but rather they're giving place to the flesh. They're walking in the flesh and in the carnal mind, the carnal mind. So sanctification is what the Holy Spirit wants to do and will do in our lives right now if we will allow Him to. And my brothers and sisters, it's worth every battle, every effort that we can put forth to obey the Holy Spirit, to obey Him and to do what's right, to live as righteous and as holy as we possibly can. Because then, God will use us he will, we will begin to, He will manifest to us the gifts that He's given us. Spiritual gifts. He will use us to, to lead many people to Him. To, we will become a soul winners. We will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. We will lay hands on the dead and they will, they will come back to life. It will happen in our lives as we walk in obedience to Him. Amen? Amen. So, uh, someone read First uh, Peter, first chapter, verses one and two. And if you will, Christina, you look up second or First Corinthians six eleven. First Peter. Yes, First Peter, chapter one, verses one and two. 
Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect strangers in the world, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by His blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. So we have been called, based upon the foreknowledge of God, to be sanctified unto the obedience of Jesus Christ. Um, did you find 1 Corinthians 6 and 11? Um, Albert, read um, 2 Corinthians 3.18, please. And Jeff, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Oh, you will have to give that? me a minute in this big well, you're, you don't have a minute. 1 Corinthians 6.11. 2 Corinthians 3.18. Uh, All right, read out loud so we can everybody can hear. Who's going first? Uh, Christina. In the order I call. So you want me to read this? 1 uh, Corinthians? 1 Corinthians 6, Six 11, verse 11. 11. All right, and such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, I've, I've but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by no. the Spirit of our God. So we have been justified <clears throat> through Jesus Christ, and we are in the process of being Testament. sanctified right now. Right now. Who here can say, God did something in me? Yep. Just the other day. Mm -hmm. I know that was God. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. I mean, He wants to manifest Himself in our lives in, mighty, in a mighty, mighty way. And He will if we obey Him. Uh, next scripture, I think, Albert. What was it? Um, 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all with open face beholding as a glass, in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. So by the Spirit of the Lord, He wants to change us from glory to glory, more and more into the very image of Christ. So that when the day we stand before Him, we will be like Him. John says that we know not what uh, uh, what He is, but we know that we will, when we see Him, we will be as He is. That is, if we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, to change us from glory to glory. And who, who what script did you find it? That first... What, did, what scripture Go ahead. did you tell It was uh, 2 Thessalonians, uh, no, 1 Thessalonians, I'm sorry, 5.23. All right, let's see what we got. All right, you said 5.23? 5.23. All right, hold on. All right. I'm getting old. <laughs> This is the old book, too, by the okay. way. Uh, Brethren, pray for us. Am I doing this right? This one. Oh, okay. And uh, the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God who will, with your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, doesn't that say it? Yeah. Doesn't that say it all? He wants to uh, um, preserve us holy, uh, both our spirit, soul, and body until the coming day of the Lord. And He's going to do that if we allow Him to, if we work with Him, cooperate. But we have to walk in the Spirit so that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. We have to deny ourselves and to take up our cross daily and follow Him. It's so easy to fulfill the flesh, but it's much more difficult to obey the Spirit. Uh, okay, the third thing that God wants to do for us in the future is glorification. What do I mean by that? The glorification is the act of presenting something hey, as baby. admirable. 
there is coming a time when this is going to be over. It's going to end. We are in right now the church age. And we are at the very end of the church age. The, the others call it the age of grace <laughs> and mercy. Jesus came. He came as grace with, with grace and mercy. Before that, in the Old Testament, God was a wrathful God. He punished sin right then and there. He, people were killed. People, he, God punished sin with consequences right then and there in the Old Testament. But now today, in the church age, God is withholding, uh, generally speaking, His, His wrath, His judgment, with the hopes that the Bible says that all will come unto repentance, to the knowledge of the truth, that none would be lost. God is, desires that all men and women be saved. He, he takes no pleasure, the Bible says, in any of us being lost because it is eternal punishment. It is, a, it is an eternal sentence. Separation from Him forever and ever and ever with no end. So this is a very, very serious thing, serious matter, our relationship and our walk with God. We are talking about, brothers and sisters, where we're going to spend eternity. For those of you who are watching, where will you spend eternity? Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. For He said, I am the way, the truth, the life, everlasting. And no man comes to the Father but by me. No religion will save you. No other prophet, no other God. Jesus Christ is the only way. Because He was God in the flesh who died on the cross for our sins. He took our punishment. And so, glorification is the final step in what God wants to do in our lives. Um, who has Ephesians 5.27? Did I give that to anybody? Albert, read Ephesians 5.27, please. <clears throat> And Christine, if you'll look up Colossians 3 4. Kathy, Romans 8 30. 527? Yes. Read it loud. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. So Jesus is coming for a holy church without spot or wrinkle. He is coming for a people who are fervently waiting for Him, watching for Him. He said, I will come as a thief in the night. Watch and pray, for I've come as a thief in the night. So we right now as Christians should realize that the next event on God's calendar is the rapture. Everything has been fulfilled up to the rapture. And, and, and it, it could happen at any moment. And it is going to happen soon. And so that is our great hope. That He's coming in the rapture to take us out of here. That we will not have to face the wrath of the devil and the wrath of God that's going to be poured out during that seven year great tribulation. The Bible refers to it as the... Um, the, the, it will be hell on earth. Jacob's trouble, the Old Testament calls it. And we can escape that, and we will escape it as we walk with God and as we become those people who He's coming for without spot or wrinkle. Now, we know that our faith justifies us we know that we have no righteousness within ourselves. For he who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And who is that? Who was that? Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus is our righteousness. He is our, our right standing with God. Uh, next verse. It was Colossians what? Th four. Three and four. Three and four. Chapters or... Um... Chapter 3, verse 4. Okay, gotcha. 
verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Amen. Amen. We are going to appear with him in glory in, in, in his likeness. Just as Jesus, when he came back after uh, the cross, when he after he was resurrected and he walked amongst his disciples, they were astonished because he walked right through the walls and he disappeared just like that. We will be like that. We will walk in other dimensions, if you will. In the spirit, if you will, a spiritual realm. We will be like him. Um, next uh, verse. Who had um, 830? Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, then he also justified, and whom he justified, then he also glorified. And the glorification is coming. It's not here yet, but it's coming. And so I'm going to read the um, First Corinthians 15 verses 51 through 57. If you want to turn there, chapter 15 verses 51 through 57, 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this, incorrupt, for this corruptible must put on incorruptible. And the, this mortal man must put, put on immortality. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be written, or shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So it, it all goes away. So the third thing, and uh, let's read one more scripture and I'll, and I'll conclude. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15-17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 15 through 17. 1 Thessalonians. Read out loud. What is it? 15 through 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You want me to start in verse 15? Yeah. Um, think about the right spot. For this is this for this we say unto by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. And so, Amen. the final process <coughs> that God, uh, His plan for us is glorification. What's that mean? It means that when we are caught up with Him into His presence in the rapture, and for those of us who may die before that happens, um, to heaven um, it's a two stage process their spirit will be in heaven but they will join their bodies during the rapture and those who remain that are still alive their who are still in their bodies will be caught up and that we, is when we will receive an incorruptible body an, incorru an immortal immortal body and it will be just as the body of, of Christ Jesus had when he appeared before his disciples. And what's that mean? It means that we will be transformed from the very presence of sin in our lives. We will never sin again. Hallelujah. Nor will we even desire to sin. We won't we will never desire in the glorified body to ever disappoint our Lord, to ever disobey him. For we will be perfect sinless as he is 
That is God's ultimate purpose for His children. So that He may present to Himself a bride, a glorious bride without spot or wrinkle. That we may be with Him forever in heaven as His children and we will truly be, have and walk in His divine nature. Sinless. Perfect. Amen? Amen. 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 So, um, I'd like for us to pray now. Uh, did y'all get anything out of that? Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, this should give us hope. Because we're not here just wandering around or, or you know, smacking at space or, or trying to figure out what in the world's going on in our life. We, we have purpose. We have purpose. Can I read something real quick? Yes, go you ahead, and I Ken, did please. It with, um, Anybody sorry, else? Find please, it again real please. quick. This is um, something when we looked over it before. Give me two seconds here. Of course, I ain't going to be able to find it right off. Well, y'all forgive me here. Okay, well, look, we're going to have some praise. If anybody's got a praise report, I'd like to hear it. Anybody got a praise report? I do. Why don't you stand up? Well, you don't have to. Whoa, 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 whoa. I won't put you on the spot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's off. Did you see her? I just want everybody to hear it. Go ahead. My children were involved in some heavy duty flooding, and they were stuck at their job at Dunkin' Donuts in downtown Barrie. And the 